This is the Mountainside Podcast, and joining us in studio for this episode was Jordan Kurtz alongside Yusuf Salal. Yusuf just recently made his return to the UFC, coming off of a win last weekend. Jordan Kurtz, multiple-time guest on the Mountainside. He's the host of the MMA Plug, broadcasting on Mile High Sports Radio. He's also an MMA commentator. This was a great episode with these two. It was the first time I had met Yusuf. Unfortunately, we had some technical difficulties right at the beginning of the podcast, so we lost video for the first few minutes. But please stay tuned. If you'd like to listen to the first little bit of the podcast, head on over to Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your audio podcast and check uh, it out. Yeah, we Hollywood. Let's go. Yeah. Damn, bro, I can hear everything so smooth. Hey, let's just dive into it. Ready to roll. Welcome to the mountainside. <laughs> <laughs> this is cool, man. Oh uh, yeah, it's yeah. awesome. <laughs> Been on my short list for a long time, you said. I know. He told me. He told me come by. I was like, oh, let's do it. And then he he sent me where I'm going. I was like, because you guys always comment on the posts and everything. And yeah. I was like, I was like, I gotta support the crew, I know. dog. And I was like, damn, I gotta be in it too. So I'm I'm happy, man. I'm happy I'm here. Hell yeah, dude. We're stoked to have you and Jordan. Bro, I go, I go, I go ham, bro. I went like yesterday. One of my good like sponsors took me out to victory dinner oh yeah and bro, oh, we yeah. went we went to shanahan's i think it was i don't know that i've been there i've been to always a couple times of the but like steaks, shanahan's bro. is over shanahan's and above one, one of the best steaks bro. bougie ass yeah bro i'm telling you <laughs> like i it's like the best steak i tasted in denver i mean i bet but i was like bro i got that because I was like, as soon as I find out, you know, like, oh, your sponsor taking you out, whatever. I was like, okay, I don't get to try shit like that ever, you know. I was like, dry age and this, this, and this and that. And I was like, I was like, all right, fuck it, let's get it. He was, he made sure I get it too. Right. He's like, <laughs> you're gonna get this. And I was like, all right. Uh, I was like, okay, let me get the. I think it was 18 ounces. Oh bone, damn, that's a big ass steak. Yeah, dude. bone in ribeye, and then tomahawk. Did it have oh, a big ass bone small hanging out bone of it? This one, I almost okay. went for the tomahawk one. I should have. Yeah. But they were like, oh, small make guy. it. Ma- make Can't it. handle that much, man. <laughs> what, small guy, bro? Look at me. I'm big as fuck, bro. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> bro, I finished the whole thing. Yeah. Everybody was looking at me. Everybody got like 10 ounces. They couldn't all eat for like half. And I'm like, got the whole thing. But, bro, they ruined it with uh, I the, uh, like, he's like, like, be, like, I went all the way bougie. I got like crab Oscar style, whatever yeah. you call it. Bro, that thing ruined the whole thing, and I was like, I had to remove the whole thing and just oh yeah, straight I'm steak. Just, a, just give me the steak, dude. Bro. Fuck all the sides, all that other filler yeah, I don't bullshit. Want sauce or any of that shit on top of the yeah. steak. I, I, that's what I learned. I was like, I would never do that again. Now I know that, but maybe like get a lobster tail. That lobster tail is bomb. Yeah, but, yeah have that on the side, but, but yeah. leave all that other bullshit. Dude, my off favorite top. thing is those uh, cold seafood like appetizers that come at the beginning. Oh, that yep. have like the shrimp yep. and the crab and the. Oh, you get yourself that, that fire. seafood tower. Damn that it. Cold seafood I'm fasted tower. right now, too. Bro, I've been, I've been more... fasting before podcasts just because I like being a little bit more on edge. I don't like being fucking tired. Like, it depends on what you eat. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It's, it is true. Like, I feel like sometimes I eat some food. And I'm like, man, I'm about to go to, especially after the fights. Like, my fat ass get fat, you know? <laughs> like, not that big, you know? Yeah. But I, I get, man, I'm like, I eat something and I'm like, Ugh. Why am I passing out? I was like, oh, because what you eat. You yeah, know, if you eat pizza or something like that, forget it. But oh, I'm that's primarily just pretty much meat, man. That's all I eat. So I, I could tell, though, that he hasn't gone too crazy in comparison to some other fights in the past, though, because normally when Yusuf goes full in and like is on the seafood diet for like a week straight or a few days after a fight... What's the first thing that gets big? Oh, it's my face, bro. <laughs> really? Bro, he I his have like fucking abs, head doubles in I have size. Everything and everything is fine. Everybody was but like, just nothing. the face, just He like looks face. like a fucking bobblehead. But that head was doll. that was the worst one. That was the only time ever, though. <laughs> but you gotta give me that. I was like one. T- so I fought. Uh, last time I fought in the UFC was before this fight was, I think it was August twenty twenty two or is it yeah twenty twenty two, Black Shear, and then my sponsor uh, is like he's like a father figure to me, you know, and he was like. Stay, stay in San Diego. Have some fun. So, bro, it's a I, great city, I, man. Yeah. So, so I usually you can get in some trouble there. Exactly. So I usually just come back and come hang out, do do privates with my clients, and train a little bit. So I was always in the gym. But this is the only time I took a whole week off, like a whole week off. Like I was nothing. Like I was not doing nothing. So I was like, and bro, I made thirty five for the first time in years. Smoothest cut I ever had. <laughs> so my body was like, oh, we need some food. But I was talking about I was eating every two hours. Like the breakfast after the fight was everybody ordered all this. I ordered three orange juices. <laughs> I ordered like pancake. I was like talking about eating, just eating, eating. And 
they got me in this fancy ass hotel. I sit in the hotel and I'm looking at DoorDash, bro. I ordered like three boxes of cookies. <laughs> Let's Finished. go. Every, what, dude? <laughs> finished every single one of them. Talk about like, sweet tooth. Yeah, yeah, like I finished every single one of them. I think it was like each one was like 3,000 calories or something like that. That's not my vice, dude, but like a salty, crunchy, like a potato chip has got to be oh, one of my favorites, Oh, don't give me salt with chips, bro. bro. I'm like, like a fuck, crackhead man. with the potato yeah. chips, bro. I'm, yeah. like, I'm telling you, bro. They're like, they're like, yeah, I was like, I, apparently like smokers or something like that, they use chips or something oh, to keep really? their hands busy. Okay. Bro, I was like, apparently I'm a fucking smoker. I'll tell you that because I've been fucking just <laughs> popping the chips. Just I never chips, smoked in my life. Bro. I was like, There's nothing like right a out. salty, like a kettle baked potato chip, man. It's, that's my crack. Bro, did you did you try the Dijon? They got me into that Dijon flavor. No, what's that? It's like a mustard it's, flavor. Uh, yeah, potato chip. A, what's that fa uh, famous? Yeah. Is it kettle chips? No, it's a honey mustard Dijon. Bro. What? Yeah. The best fucking chips I ever tasted, bro. I'm telling you, it was crack. I like they got me into. I the gotta Dijon. stay away from that shit, dude. Oh, like, just bro. give me a normal Is that the one. Cause... You put Onama onto the, in that this, video. Yeah, okay. I got my teammate. So we went in. I've I had the sriracha ones from Kettle Chips. No, Those no, are no, fucking no, no. I never had sriracha. No, yeah. No. But the do Dijon, you like spicy shit? I lo yeah, I love spicy okay. stuff. But You'll I love, probably like these. I love more like my top chips are like barbecue, Dijon, and salt and vinegar. And regular yeah, salt. Yeah, I can't fuck with the salt and vinegar, man. I, I know, know it's, it's it a quiet yeah, test. It for is. Sure. It's like too. You see, like a full on like chef, though, outside of fighting and everything, though. Like, you, you will never meet someone who's not a professional chef who has more like true cooking techniques that he just loves doing for oh, fun. I get down, bro. Like, yeah. the way. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Get down, bro, like, bro. It, it's awesome. Like, I'm so grateful anytime that, you know, I'm over at Yusuf's house or anything and he decides, like, okay, like, I, I, I'm going to cook because one, he likes cooking and he likes doing it for everybody. But two, like, you know that the way that he prepares it and, I mean, all the way, Bobby, all the way down to the way that, like, he will plate everything OCD like, style, like full yeah. on, like, oh, presentation for, for everybody. Especially yeah. for weight cuts, man. I feel like I don't, we don't eat my like, wife can't even be in the kitchen when I'm cooking, man, because she's like, I can't take you. You're, like, too methodical. And I'm like, because I have, like, my certain cutting board, my certain knife. Like, like bro, I brought I him get, some elk burger one time, and he made his elk burgers, like, full on full on meal, like, all the way down oh, to, like, he made his own, like, aioli for the burgers and shit. Hell yeah. I, I get down, You bro. cook a lot of wild game, or? Uh, it depends. Like, only when, like, Mark goes hunting, he'll bring me some. Like, he'll bring you me. You like it? Yeah. Oh, I love it, bro. Yeah. I love it. They like, especially the elk, it's man. the best meat. Oh, the elk, like, the ground and elk. And they had, like, a little beef in it, like, fat. Oh, mm -hmm. bro. The burgers in those. So good. Don't get me started. Like, but yeah. you got to undercook them, right? Like, For sure. A little it, bit. A yeah. little bit. I, I, like, to be honest, I was like, I haven't gotten to the, like, raw taste until... I've been in the U.S. obviously uh, because in where I come from, my culture is like everything is braised for m hours. Really? Yeah, like meat is so braised everything's for, cooked uh, well. Done. Yeah, well yeah. done. Like there's no medium rare steak. There's no this. There's no that. You know. Like why now, is that? Just I don't know. Stuff, or I is it no, just the flavor? I have no clue. I always that's how I grew up, and I was like, it's All right. crazy because like I have my mom will eat a hamburger that is like burnt. Oh, no, and yeah, it's yeah. like an acquired taste. If you make it right with like the right fixings and for stuff, sure. yeah, for it sure. tastes pretty damn good, dude. I'm like, yeah, I but, stick with medium. Yeah, for me, it's medium everything. Like medium is, but don't go over medium where I'm like, yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I can't fuck with the blue. I like, can't. You start that's getting just into still the blue. Or blue, it just depends on what the cut is. Yeah, nah, that's true. hell no. If, if it's nah. if it's a filet mignon, no. or something like that, like a super lean cut, then then you could go blue. No, mm. fuck no, bougie ass, no, no, <laughs> hell no. That, that, I take it, that back. Clean, I mean, I, I guess I do my bison almost blue. Mm -hmm. What? Like, because it's so just, it's it, so lean. You don't have to so worry lean. about like, bro. I'm gonna give you guys so much mouth. shit if yeah. we sit together. I'm gonna give you guys so much shit. I'm gonna be talking so much shit to y'all. I'm like, bro, that thing is still. Was the bison moose or not? Nah, the same thing. I don't know what sound a bison makes, but I know I, they kind of like I pick grunt. it up what you're putting it's like down. A, uh, like they're badasses. Yeah, that's dude. what they that thing is doing around, right there. Dude. Yeah, exactly, like, yeah. bro. Like, nah, hell no, bro. You, no, like burgers, medium, medium well. Uh, what's uh, your, hold on, what's, what's your guys' your, favorite cut though? Mine is probably like my go-to if I'm going to a restaurant is either a fillet. It depends on what kind of mood I'm in, and especially since I've been on the carnivore kick. I like a ribeye because rib all the fat is where you're getting like okay, that's all my the favorite fuel, cut. Right? That's like, my favorite yeah. cut. And then I go I'm to New York for a ribeye. Yeah. I'm not a I'm not a huge uh, fillet fan. 
but the fillets you have to eat almost blue or like exactly rare. and it's like yeah. it's like it's like medium, soft flavor you're yeah throwing yeah. money out the window exactly so i'm like like th that's the part i understand about the cooking i'm like okay like if i'm gonna eat this like i made this fancy dinner one time and we had fillets and i was like okay i have to make this medium rare like around that area because i can't like it's a cut like you can't just mess that up you know and so that's why i was like that part i was like okay fine i understand but you give me anything beside medium and and all that stuff, man. Where did you learn to cook? Watching. Yeah, I'm, I always been just uh, the watcher in in sports and cooking. Like I used to be the kid. Like I remember I was so I grew up in Morocco. Uh, like I came here when I was thirteen, but uh, yeah, I would literally go upstairs watch my mom. So in Moroccan food, they like we have it's called tagine. Like if if Derek can bring it up, it's it's literally tagine, and you can see what I'm talking about. It's the the things they cook the meat in, and uh, I think it's T A I N uh, J E maybe. Uh, Just maybe say put, hold on, Moroccan. Cooking so after, put Moroccan. Yeah. So M O start from the whole thing. Maybe like that, but put Moroccan, it'll pop up. So put Moroccan. Yeah, and then tagine, T, and then it pop up first. Yep, there you go, the first one. That's what they look like, bro. Oh, it's kind of like a, yeah, a little so, pot, so, right? Yeah, like a clay. Dude, the, those are clay. so good, like the stews and stuff. Yeah, I've so eaten the, Morocco So food. Morocco food is mostly this. Like it's literally yeah, cooked with this, bro. Let's go. I love stuff like that. Oh, dude, bro, like so you talk about flavors. So like I was literally yeah. watching, like it'll come in. My mom will like literally put all this stuff together and then let it cook for God, three hours so good yeah right for now. three hours four hours you know so i'm like i always learned and i always learned the spices and all that like morocco is like more of a spicy salty area you know it's not like more of like mostly high braised meats like mm -hmm. especially like lamb they love lamb down there it's like it's the biggest thing so that's such an underrated cut here in america dude like lamb i've eaten a lot of goat out of the country too oh, believe goat, it or not yep. it's morocco, not bad, morocco dude. Goat. Like, it's delicious yeah. i love goat especially in mexico man oh Probably. i love goat yeah. bro i love goat and i mean we eat the animal from the nose to the tail so literally you eat everything like yep. cheeks brains uh stomach you, you you name it we eat all and that is there like because in america that you you wouldn't be able to sell that shit, honestly, oh, unless you're no. like the liver king, right? Oh, Peddling hell no. fucking yeah, supplements yeah. They, or something. Unless you have it in your own farm. And I eat a lot of, uh, like, I eat some of the organs meats, but I don't eat, like, the lungs and stuff. But uh, liver, heart, liver, for oh, sure. I love the liver um, and heart, yeah. Tongue sometimes, like oh, bison tacos, tongue. bro. Ooh. <laughs> you braise that thing for a couple hours? Yeah. Oh, we're set. We're set. I never had That's bison awesome. tongue, though. But you got... Is that just accepted in the culture, like, or is yeah. there like our kids are like, I'm not eating brains, or is it like an acquired taste, or like, bro, I I, t I see people here like being like very picky. I was like, man, my mom and my family, they're like, I as soon as I sit in the table, they're like, uh, what do you want? Like, like I'll always that kid will always because in Morocco we eat everything with bread, homemade bread every day. They make it every <sighs> that's day, awesome. right? So I, that's why I was like, I would not make weight if I was in Morocco. There's no way, but. So like I would literally tell them make me a sandwich with everything on it, so things don't even make sense. Like I would try to put together because I was just wanted to eat. But if I didn't like it, they were like, okay, well starve. Like right. that's how I kind of learned. I'm like, well if I don't if I don't go eat, I'm fucking actually gonna starve. So let me go try to eat whatever I can find. Then that's why I've never been picky on food. I I eat anything you put in front of me except pork, obviously. But I eat anything in front of me. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I guess I kind of grew up on, I guess I ate heart at a pretty young age. Like, oh, was the yeah. first thing that. That's the first thing we That grilled. was like the first organ meat that I really had. And I was like, this is really fucking good. Like, I, I like the flavor of it, man. But it was an elk heart. You I know? haven't had a ton of heart, but what I have had, I've had uh, I've had chicken hearts from Brazilian oh, steakhouses. Yeah, where oh, those are nice, yeah. too. They those do nice them, too. like, in espresso beans. Or, like, they have them, like, ground up that way. And, I don't know, it's just kind of like a little... It's like a chicken rub, nugget, yeah, or rubbery something, right? texture yeah. type of thing. Like not not the worst thing in the world. 
But Whoa. but yeah, the uh, you guys fuck around with Rocky Mountain oysters? Hell you yeah, know, I just had, yeah. I just had some the hell yeah, fried ass shit. But come uh, on, bro, I can't get it down. You can't. Ah, it. oh, come I don't on. Know. It's like some, it's the, I'm too American, dude. I think. Nah, fuck it. I was, yeah. they, they told me they they're trying to fuck with me. They're like because they're like, hey, I got invited to this <laughs> restaurant. <laughs> what was it? What was that restaurant? Is it Shannon's, like Shannon's? Right? No, no, no. Oh, oh, okay. Buckhorn Exchange. Oh, the Buckhorn. Or which one? Was is it that one by the mountains or like Red Rocks or something like around that area? I don't know. Oh no, that's not the Buckhorn. I don't. But it's a famous restaurant. It's that famous restaurant that sells them in Colorado. Oh, the fort. The I, fort. It's I, like an old fort, I think so. Fort, right? I think so. Like so I those, go in there. I haven't been in there in a long time. They're like I think yeah. the server's yeah, dress yeah. is this like one right here. Yeah. Indians and shit, don't yeah, they? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's this one right here. Yeah. And then they put me in there. They were like, they're, they're like, uh, it's one of my clients. They're like, hey, we, in, we want to invite you to dinner. And I was like, yeah, awesome. I'll be there. And uh, I go in there and they were like, Oysters. So I was like, oh, I thought it was fucking oysters gonna show up. It's like <laughs> I'm about to eat some oysters. I was like, whatever, you know. Some baby bull balls right there. Huh? Yeah, and yeah. they're like, okay, and I see the shit fried, and I was like, what the fuck is this? They're like, oh, just eat it, and I was like, they're like, oh, you just eat balls. I was like, damn, that's actually delicious. I was like, all right, I was like, and everybody's looking at me. I finished the whole thing, and everybody's just watching. I was like, you fuckers just did it for the testers for me. And I was like, uh, they didn't work on me, but yeah. but in Morocco, like we have the holidays of Eid. Eid, like we obviously sacrifice either a lamb or a uh, cow or whatever the, the family can afford, obviously. But literally, as soon as they uh, sacrifice the, the lamb or whatever, the guys get to work. So the guy will get to butchering. The guys will get like, okay, get the liver. So what we do, the first thing is it's like it's an appetizer. It's like a barbecue. So they have a barbecue outside. You put the liver in and you wrap it in fat. The actual fat oh, yeah, from, I bet you that's the, good. from the because that's lamb. the thing with organ meats that I found with like exactly, heart and stuff. Dry. You gotta yeah, you gotta cook it in a high fat content. So, so like, that's what they do. They literally wrap it and then grill it and then give it to you as an appetizer. You put some salt, some cumin, and some pepper. Hell yeah, pop that thing go. in. Yeah, yeah, I bet you it's good as fuck. Oh, huh? it's good, bro. And the heart too. That's the number one thing you go to as well. So growing up here in Colorado and you know, trying to find jobs when you were a kid. One of the things that I got invited to is like, it was like $16 an hour as a kid. Oh, and I think I was making like five twenty five an hour or something like working on a bison ranch, uh, right around the corner here. But they were like, Hey, we're having a branding. It was only for one day, but they were paying the branding hands. One of the hardest jobs I've ever done. So there'd be like a cowboy on a horse and they're, they're putting their brand on the cattle, Oh, but they're also vaccinating and neutering at the same time. So they're turning the calves into, I guess, I don't, I don't know. What does a calf get turned into? A heifer? Not a heifer. I don't know. I'm not a rancher. But anyways, these dudes it's were straight. my realm. I'm a son of a This, say, I don't even know what he's this was about. like some Yellowstone type shit, dude. Like this old like ranch boss came out and set up this barbecue. And I was like, what the fuck is he doing? And they had like the, the branding irons, you know, that they were torching and stuff. But this fool was like, I was like, is he going to cook like fucking hot dogs or some shit right now? He was cooking the oysters as soon as they were coming off the cows, yep. like fresh off the cows. And these cowboys were eating them like fucking popcorn, dude. Like yep. no seasoning, no nothing. Just yep. fucking like got to keep going. And I was like, I couldn't fucking do it, dude. I tried one and it did not taste good. Yeah. I mean, I think it still had hair on it. <laughs> Well, that's why they burn it. They try <laughs> yeah. to burn it. Yeah. Oh, I smell. Oh, dude, I came home smelling. That is one of the worst smelling jobs you'll come home from because you're covered in cow shit, and then you just smell like burnt hair. Because it, what I was getting yeah, paid to do was like to hold the legs while they fucking burn this thing. Yep. It was crazy. Yeah, it was but crazy. I, it's, it's kind of like that. That's hard yeah, work. Man. Yeah, it's it's a it's a lot of hard work. But like it's always like I seen like. It's always a man, like they always had it as like a man's job. Like, okay, you get yeah. this. Like, as soon as you get the head, like they give us the head and you got to dump it in the fire right away. So to get, to get all the hair off and to get it like so dark, like even they sell it. Like if you look up maybe uh, Morocco meat market, but literally, it's literally. So you they go just in sell there, the whole head. They huh? sell the whole head. Like you'll see like everything and like all that stuff. It's, it's, it's crazy, man. By the way, you would have the best sausage. See the, see the heads right there? But the other one, oh, there, yeah. you see how the head is burnt right there. And then like the So feet, then what the, are people buying those for? For like the eye? Oh, guess, they the buy, they even have or? camel too. Yeah, I never tasted the camel, by the way. But the like the feet, you buy the cow feet, you make like, because everything's slow braised. So right. it's like everything comes off and it's fatty and like just eat with bread, obviously with your hands. So it's stuff like that. But I'm telling you, man, the best sausage I ever tasted to this day still. 
It's, it's cool. Right. Well, well, yeah, when you guys go there, get, get okay. some sausage, man. I'm telling you that. What, what kind of animal? It's it's uh, uh, lamb. Lamb sausage? Yeah. Okay. But Hell I don't think yeah. it's beef. So the only thing you're going to find is lamb, beef. And if you go to other places like the camels, they have some camels. But it's mostly lamb and beef. Those are, they're the most most sold ones out of that one. What brought you to the States? Was it fighting or? No, no, no. So I came uh, to visit. So my brother, my older brother, came with my dad. So my mom my mom and my dad were like, listen, this fool is getting like, was getting in t- too many bad friends, too many trouble. They were like, fuck this. We're not going to see our kid lose his future, blah, blah. So they did everything they can do in their hand and the power to get a visa to get him here. So they got him here, and it was him and my, my dad. And uh, I came in 2009 to visit them after I haven't seen my dad for a year, my brother for a year. I think it's more than a year, actually. But I came visit them, and then uh, we were there for like three months, and we were about to leave back. And then my mom was like, I think you and my brother, my, older, my other older brother that passed away, you should stay here. And I was like, uh, I was young. I was like, I didn't even know. I was like, yeah, okay, sure, yeah. So, sure enough, 10 years later, I didn't see my mom until 10 years later. I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, yeah. Oh, damn. Oh, yeah, yeah, shit is crazy. So I think I a lot of people take that for granted here, like what you have to go through to actually come here and what you're leaving behind, man. Bro, I just became a citizen last year. Really? Yeah. Congratulations. I just bro. got my citizen last Glad year. Glad to have bro. you, dude. This oh, I know. Is I, was about to I was like, yeah. I was like, bro, I've been doing my American paying taxes, doing shit. this, doing that. You could have just went down to Mexico, I walked like, across the border, shit. and made some money, dude. I was like, like, bro, what the fuck? I was like, are you kidding me? But I was like, whatever. You know, it it took ten years, but like I was, like I said, I'm I'm very happy and blessed to be here. Obviously, you know. But uh, but yeah. So I came visiting my my dad and my brother, and then my mom obviously saw what the potential could be. So, I mean, she's right, man. She, I changed my whole life, obviously. So, but she's like, yeah, I, I think you should stay here, you and your brother. And I was like, I was like, I was a young kid. And I was like, okay, yeah, whatever, sure. And obviously started going to high school and then start going and going and then fighting, got involved. Yeah, yeah. How, how did you make the transition into that? Were you wrestling or anything? No, or so just... the funny part is not a lot of people know, I started kickboxing when I was 10 years old in Morocco. Really? Yeah, yeah. Like I, used, so my mom, well, it was me and my sister. So my mom would be like, "You guys come from school. You're going straight to the gym. I don't want you to hang out with anybody. Don't want you to do anything." Like she wants me to keep me away from everybody, and I don't know. I feel like I I've been blessed enough to to have people around me telling me to do the right things. I don't know why. I don't influence know. is huge. Yeah, right? I don't know what the hell they saw in me, but obviously I can see why. But I was just like, you know, I was just a kid. I was just living life, like whatever, you know. I wanted, I wanted to be the teenager that everybody was in Morocco, which is get in trouble and be, be, be a lot of stuff. You do drugs, do that. And, but like, my mom was like, no, like it's not happening in my watch type of deal. You the know? fun stuff. Yeah, you know. <laughs> so, so I was literally me and my sister would go to school, come out, go eat, do the homework that we need to do, whatever, and then train at night. And it was me and her at night, like, I'm talking like late night, walking down in the street, just me and her, teenage, like, young. So I started doing that, and I was just, like, having fun. And I did my first tournament when I was 10 years old. Got my really? ass kicked. Like, I got beat up. I were was, you fighting another 10-year-old? Or were yeah, you, like okay. another teenager, too. And it's funny. It's like, I don't know if you, if you can see if you pop it up, but it said, uh, like, put Morocco kickboxing tournament. And then, bro, they have literally just mats and two chairs where your coaches sit, and then you two go at it. That's so it. no ring. Yeah, it was yeah. Called, it was called full contact. That's what it was called. It was uh, it was not even a ring. Yeah, it was not even a ring. It was literally just a mat, but it was called full contact. That's literally you come in, you come in as a team like that with your team, and then is to have this whole mats and sit down and then like get in so that was me yeah like that see those blue mats right there oh yeah like that that's pretty much what it was and then you sit you you fight each other bro i was so nervous i thought i was gonna shit my pants and pee my pants <laughs> oh my god because it was me and the whole team they came with as they're representing the gym and then my sister so i'm looking at her and i'm looking down and i'm like fuck i was like fucking scared bro and i go in there got my ass beat you know like 
just by points, lost by points, whatever. I'm all sad. I'm like, fuck this. I don't want to do this. And uh, kept doing My mom was like, nope, you, you're doing this. Even my dad, same thing. It was like, and I, if my dad said something, I, yes, sir, just, I'll be there. Like, I couldn't do nothing, you know? So I, I went back and they had a, a gym tournament, an inside gym tournament. So all they did, bro, they had two posts in the gym and they wrapped rope around it. That was the ring. <laughs> it's fucking crazy bro. Yeah. so i get in there and i got all that the f homies my my brothers aside and all this stuff they came in watch me i won i i won my fucking fight fucking had some fun and then everybody was like hell yeah so like they kind of like started loving it you know and obviously i had to let that go when i came to the u.s and i started doing i did a second grade uh second semester in the eighth grade because we we didn't know where to go, we went. Uh, I went to Overland High School, mm -hmm. and then Overland High School had next to was, it was Colorado the, the first place first in America place, yeah. that you came. Yeah, my wow. my my you brother, a good state, man. my Shit. my brother went to New York. Okay, and him and my dad, and then they moved to Colorado. So I went to see them in Colorado. So I was like, I was, yeah, I was like, first time, I, first time I landed, I saw the snow for the first time in my life. Like wow. I started grabbing it, started like I tell the story to people. I like started putting it in my face <laughs> and shit like that. But that was like that, you know. And I was like, holy shit! Like, this what was is your no first time like seeing wildlife or something like? Is that crazy? no, I, like not too crazy because in Morocco yeah. I saw some wildlife yeah. in the mountains, especially in my grandfather's house. Like he lives like right up in the mountains. Like you know, like if you look up Morocco mountains, like people live in the like you talk about places you're like holy shit like how do people make it here you know right like that's that's why i feel like the toughness Some comes from yeah 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 like oh, that's fucking beautiful like, man like, like you have to walk down to get water that's that's how bad it is yeah but that was that you know so i was like kind of like came here and my mom was like hey and my my dad was like hey i think you should put him back into training and i didn't do that until like high school and i remember i went in there was the american top team next to the apartment and my dad was like went in there and I saw I remember Bobby Lashley, fucking huge, bro. And he was talking to me. He was the he was the manager. And uh I think isn't he like WWE heavyweight champ now or something? He was at one point. But, was, okay. But yeah, yeah. I mean bro, one of the just yoked big story. Yeah. Look at it, look at it. Look at look up Bobby Lashley. Bro, bro, the biggest neck that you'll ever see. Cannonball delts. Like it's insane. That's I, that was yeah. my main training partner, by the way. Like one of the main training partners I trained with. That's that guy right there. <laughs> Jeez, I yeah. saw him when he came in one time and uh, hit pads with Austin, and I was like, "Oh my god!" Like, Bro, it was it was literally like his he he wore a sleeveless shirt, but it was almost like he was wearing like a little hoodie or like a turtleneck in that sense. Like he's wearing one of those neck like, pillows you use bro, on the plane. Bro. Bro. <laughs> his, his traps that start all the way up like toward the top of his ears and just run straight out to his shoulders. The, one of the most jacked human beings, jacked oh. while still being athletic human beings. Oh, he's, did he fight like, MMA freak. at all? Like, yeah, bro, he, he fought for Bellator. Fight. Yeah, that's what record I thought. is actually yeah. pretty solid. Yeah, but. he fought for Bellator. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he he has like maybe like only. Two what's or his three What's losses. his record? I think like twelve and two, something like that. If you if you go to Tapology and then pull up Bobby Lashley, if you go to Tapology.com or just type in Bobby Lashley Tapology. Going to work today, Derek. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that very first one. Yeah, Is fifteen and two. Dominator. Yeah, I told you that he has a, he had a Damn, great record. Fifteen and two, bro. Yeah. That's but he crazy. fought uh he fought James Thompson. And now a he's a WWE times. You know, James star, Thompson, huh? like the guy who was also like the he he was the one they made the meme out of for years, uh fighting Alexander Bilyanenko, the guy who oh, was like right. the big Jack Terminator looking dude and, and who was like super aggro in the video, but then you have Alexander Milianenko, Fedor's brother on the other side, who is just young, looks like a bowl of mashed potatoes, just kind of fat and dumpy, <laughs> super like cooler than the other side. <laughs> side of the pillow type of demeanor and then a million ankle goes out there and whoops his ass right away but it's so we're just like the you know that the meme was don't judge a book by its cover type oh of hell no. no you never judge bro i i said this to so many people bro i'm like especially like the mexican fighters and all this you were like man like i'm about to kill this dude and you go in and you're like he's so out of shape no he's not he, he, he can take all the shots that you got i'm he's like he's just eating tortillas oh That's bro <laughs> even I'm down like, to like open class level guys like damn bro yeah it's crazy. Some of these guys, I'm like, it's just like, I don't know, it's the way we, like, we grew up or something. 
It's like the difference. I feel like I think it definitely has an influence on I don't how know, you are bro, genetically and everything. Think about it, Vera, yeah. uh, Chito Vera, bro. He said they were the, his brothers were paying people to fight him. I'm like, no wonder why you're you fucking nobody can drop you, bro. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, how many fights does he have? I mean, if you're talking total throughout, no, his life, t- I'm just talking about just this like MMA, professional fights, professional yeah, MMA. Yeah. What he's got like about twenty in the UFC alone. That's crazy. I've never been knocked down and never been dropped. Yeah. That's crazy to me, bro. And he showed why in this last one, man. Holy shit. What a chin, man. Like, I do agree, what? though, with Corey Sanhagen's assessment of it, though, that I think that that fight looked like a lot of Cheeto's last few bouts to where Cheeto was losing a lot of those fights or was just kind of waiting out until he was able big to shot. find that, yeah. that big knockout blow late in the fight. Yeah. You could say that about the Frankie fight. You could say that about Dom. You could say that about a couple of those matchups. Obviously, he got 50-45 by Corey. Yeah, he wasn't really pushing the pace. Like I wanted to see him go at it, no, Sean, a little bit harder. But that's why I tell man. people, it's though. So it's tough, though, because Sean is yeah, so good long. moving backwards. I have no room he's to so talk. So, yeah. And the way that he steps back and steps right off line and finds that right hand off of it, it's one of the best sequences that – we've seen somebody be able to put it together at a high level because the way that he did it a couple of times against Cheeto and found the mark picture perfect the way that he did it to set up Aljo all he did in each of those couple of fights like I mean the one thing that I think that we finally have to give is the credit to Sean O'Malley and Tim Welch for putting together a game plan and then Sean being disciplined and sticking to that game plan because it's one thing you could have a perfect plan right but then once you get in there and it's just kind of well fuck it we deviate first time from you the get game punched in we, the face right? wild. I would imagine it but changes that fight all the way up until the final exchange where he finally kind of threw caution to the wind because he knew that he was at short time he was 24 minutes and 45 seconds of perfect execution of a disciplined game plan, right? Staying at range, not letting the fight get dirty, not letting it get to be the point to where Cheeto could make it that dog fight to where he puts himself in a position where he could hurt Sean. And where he finally did, like, hey, he, if you don't kill that dog, that dog's going to keep on trying to bite you. Yeah. And he finally got him inside of 10 seconds with that body shot. And credit to Sean for poker facing it out. But... I think that, yeah, I mean, and you could speak to it from the IQ side of things way better than I can, but I think that that was just a, an example of, one, a phenomenal game plan, but two, a tremendous example of discipline to stick to that game plan. Yeah, I think what the people don't, uh, a lot of people don't understand the difference is it's, it's all good. Like, if I, as a fighter, you always want to get that, okay, now I feel, I feel it. Now I'm there, you know? I think he never got the opportunity to feel that because you just – reacting you have just to react in fighting you don't want to be react like too reactive like you want to be reactive obviously it's it's the iq you're like okay right. you gotta understand like you gotta respect this you gotta respect that because if you don't you might get knocked knocked out well, especially at the level that you guys are it's but, so yeah technical, exactly man. you know it's so much more te- a technical sport than it has ever been and if if like somebody can't find the the strike they want or to to wake him up or something like that like you might just not never find it like he said it was like multiple times like the dominic cruz fight he was losing and then he knocked him out you know because right. he was dropping him down every like <clears throat> each round until he finished him on the, was it third yeah i can't remember what what exact point but he was down on the cards up to that but he was dropping stage. him at, at the end of each round i think he dropped him yeah but he's just like you just like that's why the difference between IQ and like just toughness, right? It's like and some broke guys his face left his nose looking like Mike Perry's. <sighs> yeah, but that's what I'm saying. It's like I feel like that's the 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 opportunity that like Sean did real good at. It was like and the last shot he allowed that because he was trying to finish him, and he was trying to like he trying didn't to have to do that. Yeah. Right? yeah, he didn't have to do that. Like even in the fourth round, uh, his coach was saying. You don't need to finish him. We're four and zero. Like we went in four and zero. Like all you do is just pop and move, pop and move. And which he was doing for the first three minutes, four minutes. But to give props to him, he was trying to finish. But obviously, if you finish Cheeto, you you might be the greatest oh, fighter in the world. I think that puts a huge stamp in the book, right? Oh, yeah. Wow. But that's why I think the IQ comes in handy, though. I feel like because if you look at how Corey fought him, I mean that's just all IQ, bro. He never let him even go. But like you can tell, the the frustration comes out. When the frustration comes out, you don't act right. Like the only thing frustration gives you is a good good luck shot. 
you know it's like okay i might land this i might land that and then that's when the fighters like i just look at it, it was like josh Emmett versus uh michael johnson if you go watch that fight johnson was winning two and a half what i think it was like two plus two and a half of he that was round winning every about every second of that fight until he got knocked out bro and then just one thing one hell mary takes one little yeah to, to land you know but it's like you can tell the difference you know that's the one of the most the exciting IQ. things about the sport oh man, it can go any way over. man it's never never over, over. what's yeah. his name uzman versus leon oh my god four dude, and a half rounds yeah 24 minutes and 50 seconds like that's crazy to me you know and then he comes back he comes back got didn't even get taken down once i think right yeah and leon took him down that's that's what i'm saying so it's yeah. like the sport involves so much and like we're just watching so dustin much. poirier in this last fight man <sighs> that was insane but that like, dude that is my like one of my favorite fighters bro i i love that dude it's like just to what what he taught me a lot like just by watching him is experience i can see in his face you yeah. know i can see in his his emotions. backstory is crazy oh too, for man. sure like, bro yeah like that that's what i love so much about him bro he it showed me a, like i can tell like you can tell when an experienced fighter or just an upcoming fighter well i think that that's one of the best things that you guys have at factory x right like look at the pedigree of fighters that you're training with on a daily basis you're surrounded by how many times has the coach has been you know in somebody's corner I mean, Mark's in somebody's corner like every fucking oh, weekend yeah, almost, bro. man. It's crazy. Bro, he put me to, I remember when I was not fighting, I traveled, I think it was like 40 weeks out of the year, just cornering everybody. Just I, I learned so much about the business. Just Does that help business. you as a oh. fighter too? Like just like bro. to get like some of the butterflies? Does it help? Oh, 100%. In that aspect, I, remember, like being, I remember when I fought my first UFC debut, it was a Toyota Center. It was versus uh, Houston. Awesome in Houston, Ringo. yeah, and it was uh, John Jones versus Reyes's card. So I, I remember yeah, that, yeah, like my my like I before that, bro, I cornered UFC, I cornered Bellator, I cornered PFL. I mean, I took the PFL. We took Steven Siler all the way to the finale. So I could like I seen everything. I seen all about the business, the ins, the outs, the the good, the bad, the dirty, everything. So like for me when I came to fight time and I was like, I'm, I'm very you comfortable with up. this. Yeah. So when I got back to this how good time, does actually, it feel to be back at the UFC, man? Like, is that was it, that like a? It's satisfying to my like it, it, I satisfied myself in like okay, your patience because I had to learn that was my biggest thing I had to learn is the patience, my patience, my hard work. I feel like I always worked hard in my life. I always done like you don't have to tell me to come to the gym. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to tell me to do this. You don't have to tell me to do this, you know. And I'm one of the guys, like, I'm either going to break you, you're going to leave the gym, or I'm going to break you, you're going to be the best fighter in the world. I'll tell you that. And that's what, like, I give the guys <laughs> to, you know. So, but that was kind of like that, you know. Like, it, it just, it brings joy to me to to see the the work actually paying off and the patience is actually paying off because. I was so and, happy for you, dude. Oh, like, bro. I mean, it was heartbreaking. Oh, I needed like, that, yeah. you know. It was, it was like. You talk about roller coaster emotions. You go fight in front of millions, and you fight in front of two hundred people or three hundred people, and like you don't know if this. I still is don't it. know exactly what happened. I mean, we can talk about that at a later date. Oh, but, well, yeah. we. I don't. He, that fight I did not lose, by the way. Okay. But I'm happy that that happened, though. Yeah, I'm happy that I got kicked out. A lot of people said, like, "Why would you say that?" Because it made me who I am. Like it opened up a, a whole a whole door that. I did not believe in that much, like as I say, or because everybody around me, everybody around me, coaches, friends, everybody like, keep an eye on this kid, keep an eye on this kid, keep an eye on this kid. Blah, do you blah. think that, uh, and this might be too personal, but do you think Eli Tuporia went in the the belt had something to do oh, with you coming bro. back? Like, so Ilya Tuporia when because the whole thing changed was when I after got kicked out of the UFC. And I seen what I bring to the guys that are like ranked guys in the team and all that stuff. So I was like, okay, so I know it's a confidence thing. I know it's a mental thing. So I was like, okay. But then I started looking deep inside and I'm like watching Ilya Tapoya finishing everybody, like finishing everybody. And I was like, wow. Because I, I tell people when I fought in the UFC, the first phase was 
not to embarrass myself. How long ago did you fight him? Was that two years ago? 2020 or? Fight Island. Was it 2020? 2020 oh, that's right. Uh, fight Island, yeah. Like the first week. That's crazy. Over. You got to go to Fight Island, dude. Yeah. Bro, they woke me up for that fight. Like, he coached knock on my door to wake me up to go fight. That's how it messed up the time and everything. And, yeah. And everything was. Yeah. That's me right there. He missed that shot, by the way. Don't, don't, hell no. <laughs> fucked up. It's like, don't give me 30 up there. And by the way, bro, he's trying to choke my ass up. You talk about the first round. We we can watch the first round. Oh, my God, bro. I've never been through so many fucking chokes in my life. Bro, he tried to fucking kill me with those chokes, bro. And then I was like, after, like, uh, hey, I watched this funny video. He's like, yeah, look at this guy. He's, he has an ADHD uh, energy and then I came in the third round bro I was dead tired from defending all these shots but he was dead tired from squeezing my ass for so long it was like bro you talk about it, one of the strongest pause. guys I ever went with really I know I know pause but yeah. he's one of the strongest guys I ever went with in my whole career how much do you want to run that back oh I can't wait let's go right the, now the, dude the, like, the, the 2.0 and 1.0 is bro I told this in the interview on the UFC on Saturday I was like I would kill the old Yusuf I would literally break the old Yusuf you know and to break me, bro, you better be f really fucking good to break me. I'm Let's done go. to tell you that. But, but like that was the that was the biggest thing, you know. I was like, I know, like I needed it, but uh, it's also uh, making people understand, like, I, like coaches and all that stuff. You know, they're like, even though when I lost and everything, they're still talking and how much how good I am and how this I am and this and this and that. So it's very satisfying to to really get to feel that and feel that oh, yeah. experience so that's why i'm I was happy very for happy, you dude man. I appreciate glad to you, have you yeah, back yeah. yeah yeah but that's that was the the biggest thing but after watching Ilya, i posted on the story right away and i said i can't fucking wait i was like i can't wait to get back in there where whatever it takes i really don't care they offered me billy's name they're like he's uh were fucking... you re-signed before he won the championship or was it no i after... literally just got signed two yeah. weeks. yeah three weeks I ago i thought it was just like a couple of weeks ago was it four i wasn't weeks, sure four if it was like now? no three yeah. weeks ago yeah, two and a half weeks. Ago yeah, two and a half. Yeah. yeah, literally two and a half weeks ago, I got signed. Because the week after, uh, or the week before, you were in the hotel quarantine. The, the Ultimate Fighter for the Ultimate Fighter. I was supposed to be in the Ultimate oh, Fighter. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah I, I caught something about that. So, but they were kind of saying like, oh, they kind of wanted the new talent, blah blah blah. So I took it real. Damn, personal. that worked out then, huh? Yeah, I took yeah. it real personal, and I was like, bro, before I used to like let people's comments and people's shit like take over mm -hmm. but now i like i literally just use it as a fuel i'm like oh you want new talent i'll show you what a fucking new talent looks like and i'm like all right and then to go we just did that with whitney johnson <laughs> Bro, <Bruh. laughs> and this is the sinister side of me and it's coming out a little bit but they were like i get labeled as like a chauvinist guy because like 90 percent of the guests that we've had on here are men and i've it's not that i haven't invited women on like i have multiple times but i think it's intimidating to come a for a woman to walk into a man's situation like this and then to sit down and try to be vulnerable or have a vulnerable con it takes a special type of woman right to kind yeah, of fit 100%. the mold um and it's oh, not dude, that I haven't reached out, is but like ninety five percent dudes. Yeah, it like, is here too. I was about man. to say, me too, bro. I love all dudes. <laughs> it's, bro. It's like we all actually dudes. have a lot of women that listen, and they're like, "Why don't you have more women on?" So I called Whitney Johnson. I was like, "Hey, how, what do you think about being a guest?" And then all I got was like, "Why would you have a supermodel on?" And I was like, "Why wouldn't I?" You know, it's like you wanted a real woman. This is a real oh, woman. Damned dude. if you like, do, yeah, damned if you don't. It would never it's stop. Crazy, I I told this on Saturday as well. I was like. And no matter what the fuck you do in this sport, you win or lose. I was like, I remember I went here. They're get like, hate. they're yeah. like, I'm gonna get hate. I'm gonna get this pressure of this people talking. And you, bro, you should have seen. I went in, and they were like, they were like, well, I don't know. I was the I was the underdog coming in, and then I I was just talking to him in the car about it. I was like, well, we go in, and I do an interview the media scrum on on Wednesday, and then I was like, just talking, and obviously my confidence and all this stuff, and. Out of nowhere, it became I became the favor and all this stuff, and the dude is saying, "Oh, he's a bad bat matchup for me," and and this and this and this and that. But I always learned. I was like, um, uh, Terrence Crawford. I saw an interview he did. He was like, "Yeah, it's good you fought all these guys, but you haven't fought me." And that's where I to like kind of like take into fights now. I'm like, "You never fought somebody like me." So I was like, yeah. Yeah, okay, we'll find out how good you really are and, until you fight somebody like me. You a dog fighter? Like, oh, you like to be in f like wars? Or like, well, what about if you can't be in wars? What does that mean, you know? And that's what kind of like looking at it more strategically, 
instead of just like the young dumb in me and I'm like, oh man, let's just go in and let's go fight. Yeah, 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 we'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, don't, don't just don't embarrass yourself. Just don't get knocked out. Just don't get submitted. You know, no, that's not you the guys are at such a know? high level. It's it's a chess game. Well, not a lot really? of people know that. You know, a lot of people just fight because sometimes you just gotta fight. Like sometimes you're gonna get into wars. Like we just have to fight. Like. There's not a whole lot of thinking, but there's a whole lot of things you did before the camp, you know, that that mattered. Like, okay, like, I got my conditioning's on point, my this is on point. The, like, do not cheat yourself, if that makes any sense, you know? Yeah. But if you cheat yourself, just be ready for the consequences, right? I know you're fresh off of that Saturday. How long do you wait to hear, to expect to hear back? I mean, could it be any minute? I mean, that was pretty... Before they they gave me like right away, obviously because of the COVID season and all right. this stuff. So I was fighting, and I was just saying yes to everything. But uh, uh, I'm kind of like Four thinking times about eleven months. I thought, yeah, yeah I mean, that's I think crazy. It was five fights in one year. Yeah, yeah, five fights in one year. I fight in the UFC, all in one year. But uh, the, I was kind of like kind of be. That's got to be close to a record, right? I well, would it think. was me and on Holland. We're going it's close, on. but uh, yeah, it's not the top. I know Cowboy. that Holland and Loopy have more. Yeah, and Loopy, Loopy actually she fights this weekend. Really, Pico Dinas. Yeah, okay, former awesome. LFA champion. She's a too. fun fighter too, man. Yeah, she's I love watching fun. her. But she's yeah, a tough fight though. She fights Verna Jandroba, so yeah. someone who is like the you know, styles make fights, right? World champion, jujitsu girl, submission wizard against someone who's more of that wrestling style and who is real bouncy at range. So, hey, that's that's another one to see and right there. But there's a Factory X fighter on the card too, isn't there? This no, weekend? not no? this one. No, 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 no not no. this weekend. This, uh, we have April sixth, and then we have uh, UFC three hundred, and then we right? have UFC three hundred, and then we have April twenty seventh. What do you guys think about that? About the fight? Which, just the card, man. Oh, like, bro, I can't fucking wait, bro. Yeah, that, that I can't card, either. That card, oh, my God, bro. It's like, crazy. It's going to be a fun fight week because then the night before, we have uh, we have Rob Wilkinson fighting on the PFL yep, card. I'm going He's to that one as well. He's making his return against Phil Davis. Yeah, I'll be out there for, for that whole week. Oh, you going to that? Well? That's nice, on, nice, nice, nice. You going to Vegas? Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. We got so an PFL's, in Vegas. PFL's yeah. in Vegas. PFL's in Vegas, too, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Shit, that's that same weekend? Yep. Yeah, same weekend. Damn. So coach is gonna corner from there to, uh, he fights Friday and then Cody fights Saturday. Hell yeah. Yep. That's awesome. Yeah, we have I'm we have so we have, we have, Cody, a, we have a bit. Yeah. bro. I told him, man, it's 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 the greatest opportunity for him to, to not just go shut everybody down and to, to build his confidence, bro. I'm like, I feel like, bro, you wouldn't. People f underestimate the confidence of actually being confident, right? I feel like what I learned in the past was there's delusional confidence. And then there's confidence just to make you hide from your insecurities, right? I can say, oh, I'm the best fighter in the world. But you look at it, you'll be like, if you really dig down and look down, like, are you the best fighter in the world? Like, what are you doing? Are you staying on your diet? No. Are you doing this? No. Are you doing? And then you start, like, breaking it down. That's what I had to do, like, after the, the when I got cut out of the UFC, I looked at mm -hmm. my fights and I was like, why am I shooting? What, like uh, shooting a takedown why am I this why am I that and like I started questioning all these things right and like kind of taking it on myself you know and understanding who I am like okay no I, I fucked up on this oh I fucked up on this and I don't want to start blaming or anything because why, why the fuck you need to blame you just wasting more energy on blaming you know so that's kind of like that and then you start winning and then your confidence starts boosting right but it's almost like the it takes over sometimes, right? You're like, you get lazy and you're plateaued. You're like, well, I'm winning. I'm because talented. you have that little bit of ego, you yeah, think? Yeah. yeah. Well, we all have egos. Yeah. 100% have egos. You, you know? kind of have to to be it, to perform at this sport, well, I would 100%, think, right? But like, you have to, but you have yeah. to have real ego as well. You can't have just a delusional ego. You know, you can't be like, well, I'm going to beat that guy. I'm like, oh, well, are you sure? Like, yeah. you're the one who go at night and think about it. Like, well, I can tell you that in front of you right now. I can tell you I'm a, I will be a world champion. And be like, but deep down, I'm the one who goes inside and be like, go back when I go to my bed and be like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. And you start questioning yourself and this and this and that, and that's right. when bad things happen, right? But I'm very excited, like I said, for him to to really get the opportunity, not just to change his life, but to change his his whole career. I really do think that, like, you get a win like this and and oh, to, it's huge to move yeah, on. And that's like, why I'm really so excited like for like that. Him, that's man. what I'm saying, man. I feel like it's 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 do or die moment. But you don't want to have that so much pressure of like, you know, for like sometimes we're fighting, we get into that. Like, be you, man. Have fun. Like, 
what's the worst thing that happened? You doing something that you love? Who yeah. gives a fuck? You're like on probably the biggest platform you could ever be on, man. Biggest one of the biggest fight cards you could ever be on, bro. That's an opportunity. I'm 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 pumped for him, man. I'm I'm pumped for him. I'm, I really want him. I want to see him succeed, you know, and I want to see my team succeed. So I'm I'm very happy for him, and I can't wait to watch it. I'll be there, so I can't, I can't wait to 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 see him and celebrate after. Hell yeah! I think I might be out there that weekend too. Uh, hoping to be out there. Yeah, the bro, the be whole card is awesome. insane, bro. The whole fucking card is insane. Yeah, it's gonna yeah. be. Cra- I mean, is this the? No, this no, is, this, this is, is this last weekend. week's. Pull up a UFC 300. This, is this weekend's. Or this weekend's, yeah. Yeah, yeah this is this weekend's right here. If you're not checking out the Mountainside Podcast on YouTube, you absolutely should be. If you like the content that we create here and you want to help support the podcast, please take a moment, subscribe to us on YouTube, and hit that notification bell. So pull up a uh, UFC 300. Yep, that's where we're Card. at. Card. Hell yeah. Yeah, bro. And I mean, people could say what they want about how the card ended up being scheduled or some of the bouts that are on it. The one thing that we do know now, though, is there were multiple other fights they tried to put into place to kind of be that wow factor fight Leon, for the main Islam. event. Leon Islam being one of them. Oh, that's yeah. too close to Ramadan. Yeah, that that being the situation there. There were a couple of other offers that were thrown out there. I know Leon had three different John opponents. Jones, I mean, I, John Jones I am excited that. about Pereira and Hill, but it's like I just I don't feel like that should be at the top of the – I almost feel like – Justin Gaethje, Max Holloway. I want to see more than anything, bro. I love. Do you guys watch his? Uh... I mean, I would rather see that one in the co-main. Yeah, but, you know that's. You're, 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 you can't put a B in the me the chauvinist yeah. over here, <laughs> bro. Do you watch his uh, his uh, like countdown basically that he has his own on YouTube? Yeah, Gaethje's, it's Gaethje. awesome. It's pretty dope. Yeah. That motherfucker out here got a red Lamborghini you and know, everything. This I cool. just had uh, Luke Cadillo in. He's one of his corner guys. Oh, nice. He runs a podcast over here. He's an awesome guy. Um, but I guess it's Trevor Whitman's son that's producing all that, like filming yeah. it. and producing Oh, it is? It. Yeah. Bro, Trevor Whitman is a fucking genius, bro, when he comes yeah. to like equipment and shit like that. You see that gym? Yeah, like you Alex guys was use... the one who like schooled him up on, all the, on the content side of things. Alex Crosslander, so a guy who does okay. fight dope. There, oh a, yeah, that's page awesome. Out there. So man. originally, like when they were building out all of the content strategy for like for that for oh Alex, I didn't even know that I know that they they worked very tightly hand in hand and so then once Alex went on to other things well then Trevor Sun was able to hit the ground running Fight and, Dope is a great follow bro I Alex is realize. good man yeah. bro yeah, he's, Alex he's is good. phenomenal he's, he's good so ball. damn good at what he does yeah he's good ball man there's people out there that are just next level at that and. uh it was kind of crazy. I had no idea until I was watching a deal on Coach Prime, you know, up at CU, Deion yeah. Sanders. Yep. And his son does all of his, like, content Junior. for him. Yeah. Yep. It's Deion pretty Jr. dope, man. It's cool. Yeah, well, I mean, and f- for them, what a uh, what a way that that's kind of benefited the entire situation from the time when the kids were much younger. Like, a lot of people forget about, or, or until this last season when he went to CU, they had the reality show like years and years ago when all the kids were still mm. in like in prep school, you know, in, in high he school. Did, all huh? of that. He had the reality show and then pipelined them into Jackson State where he coached them originally there. And then they made the transfer out here to see you. But they've been kind of a model of that reality TV slash like vlogger for you know years and years now. And I think that's kind of what helped amplify their platform at every step along the way, you know. When did you ever see a coach? And obviously, Coach Prime is going to bring a lot of eyes to him just by the stature of what his accomplishments were, whether it was in the media athlete, f- for, for years and years on the media side alone with NFL Network, with all, with the other uh, opportunities yeah, that he had there, but along brand, with him man. being the athlete. But we've had a lot of other coaches throughout the year. Not like or this. a lot of other athletes, I should say, that have gotten back into coaching or after being on the broadcast desk have gotten into co- the coaching world, but they didn't have the content side of things to continue to grow and amplify their platform as a whole. Now, when you see it, you know, when you when you see Prime, you think of probably in the sports world, you you think of two things, right? The energy drink or the Prime drink and Coach Prime, but like exactly. Even now, nobody wants a CU sweatshirt unless it says Prime on it. Like he, th- I think that he outsold. Even Coach got one. Even Coach yeah. got one. Coach Hell Prime. Yeah, let's go. Yeah, I know he got his ass got one too. <laughs> but uh, but I think he sells like seven million a game or something in in merch. Oh yeah, Prime <laughs> merch. 
just him alone. And, and he's been a brilliant, I mean, you, you know that from the very outset of things that Deion Sanders was a marketing genius by understanding that, you know what, especially because back then corner wasn't really a glamor position, right? In, no, in, in the no. era that he came up in, yeah. being a, a defensive back along with being a special teamer or returner, yeah, you had a lot of moments where you ha- could make big plays on the field, but the passing game wasn't what it is now today where it's as prolific or there is as many times that somebody's dropping back per game. That wasn't the case back then, but you knew that any time you did and two was back, oh, oh no, at Florida State down there in Tallahassee, he was a threat to take to the house on any given play. Then when it comes time to start building himself up for the draft, he's his Jerry Curl is dripping wet. He has chains left and right. What Herm Edwards would call the Mr. T starter kit that you said you would always say at <laughs> the Mr. NFL. T starter That's what get awesome. Dude. But he knew that by creating the brand, by creating prime time, and then by having a couple of those moments with certain organizations where he asked them where I think it was the Giants was well, one I think of them. A lot they of it is like being 10. on the mic. Could you imagine podcasting if it was around back then? Like oh, yeah. sh- it would be totally different with that yeah. era of guys. But then you had the instance of Deion Sanders where it really kind of made him pop initially and like, oh no, like he is that guy and having that sort of aura and confidence about himself. I believe it was the Giants who were sitting at like pick number 10 and it was time for interviews of the prospects. He's like, wait, what pick do you have? Number 10. I, I'm not going to be on the board that late. I'm not doing this interview. And he just completely like skipped right over him and passed him. So that's where people kind of thought like, okay, well he's this arrogant kind of braggadocious guy, but he was smart enough to know that, no, like that's that's almost, he, he was in kayfabe. Because if you see if or if you see the behind the scenes or the the actual real Deion Sanders, you know that he's a very God fearing man. He's a very, you know, to his super family religious. and yeah, very super, you know, yeah. based on. I think a he lot showed of more of that kind of side of, of himself now. Maybe it's right. his age, but I think that that's super cool. It's like it's it's made me appreciate him much more than when I was a kid. I was a Denver Broncos fan, so I hated him, dude. Like I was like. I hate this guy and see like I, i'm a 90s kid so even though i grew up a broncos fan i just loved what Deion sanders was like that was 90s sports type right. of thing you know yeah, like it was the the earring the bandana the the chain popping out he had he boys was, in the hood man. Bro, he was, like, he, was <laughs> one of the, he was one of the most swaggy players of that or the of any era but especially of that era you know him with, with his sleeves coming down the gloves where half the time they weren't even velcroed up or sitting there and he doesn't even buckle his chin strap half the time you know he's just sitting there and like all right i'm gonna lock you down i am taking away this entire half of the field but then it comes to baseball and then okay how many other guys can you say hit a home run and played uh and scored a touchdown in the and same was week? fast enough to same week yeah. yeah 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 hits hits a home run for the uh for the braves and then scores a touchdown in the same do week. you like how many times have you read into the history of Lou Gehrig at all like a little bit loose not much. fucking crazy man it is a Who's crazy that? story when you get behind it so he played uh in the 1930 well 1920s and 1930s with Bay on the same team as Babe Ruth right so, so I know Babe Ruth I'm not I'm not like a baseball football everybody guy knows Babe Ruth this guy was a better baseball player much more of an athlete he never missed a game. Oh, is that the movie they had? Uh, what's the name of the movie? I don't know. I don't know if they the New York. Uh, <clears throat> that, uh, I didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah. Uh, God, what was the name of the movie? They said he won so many rings, did. so many rings, and nobody's t- like nobody gave him the respect. Well, it's because he was like a humble athlete. Like he was the guy that never. He this guy genuinely right here? loved baseball, right? But he this never. Guy? Yeah, he never. So you know. Babe Ruth is so famous you're saying for that he wasn't a drunken whoremonger like <clears throat> Babe Ruth. A hundred percent, that was part of it. Was oh, that what Babe Ruth was? And he he would save the interviews for other guys. Like he wouldn't do interviews, so he was like, I'm, even though he was the sh- yeah, like would, the main guy of the he of the was night. the fucking man. He was the man, dude. He was like a true athlete. So you know, Babe Ruth is famous for calling his home run. In that same game, Lou Gehrig had two home runs. But that fucker has like, almost five hundred home RBI, runs. Yeah. I mean, one of the best baseball players of all time and just like a gangster. Like, dude, one time, I think it was a World Series, he caught an eight, or he had an 80 mile an hour fastball thrown at his head. Oh. Knocked out for five minutes, taken to the hospital, and came back to the game to finish it. So he would never, like, he's never left the game. Look at the awards. Dude, and then the Yankees started winning all these World Series and they, uh, 
they built them like this bougie like uh, dugout, Six right? Time. Wow. So they put all this padding and shit in the dugout, like basically like couches and shit on the benches, like all this padding. And he got pissed and went and like wherever he sat, he cut out all the foam and all the shit. He's like, I'm so sick and tired of sitting on cushions. This is not a cushion sport. Like he was, he was a true like a love for the game. The only thing he ever got in trouble for, because uh, he wouldn't drink, he wouldn't do anything like that. He wasn't out like womanizing. Like he really just loved baseball. The only thing he ever got in trouble for was playing stick ball in the streets of New York with the kids. Wow. Yeah, like, that was the only thing he ever got in trouble for. But like incredible. It, they, dude, he had a uh, they x rayed his hands at one point and they were like, How are you still even like gripping a bat? He had like he had had fractures in every finger and just never said anything about it. Like Well, does it mean yeah. that was the early onset of unfortunately what we all know or call as Lou Gehrig's disease, but he had ALS. Yeah. He did? Yeah, so that's where you remember the ice bucket challenge yeah. from a few years back? Yeah. That's Lou Gehrig's disease. That's right. So it's a, it's a degenerative disease in that sense that sent, that you know Unfortunately, he withered away in the process, but in his heyday, you see, to give you kind of a fighting comparison, and but of a more elite player in terms of his output and his production, he's like the Jim Miller of baseball back in the day. He was the wow. Iron Man. He, was, he had the, until Cal Ripken Jr. broke the record in like the late 90s somewhere. I remember watching it as a kid, but he had like 22,000 straight starts or something like that. It's insane. He has... I think he had held the record this for guy, seven yeah. decades for RBIs. Like right. Yogi insane. Berra. Oh, y- Yogi, Yogi Berra. Berra. That's what you're talking yeah. about from the movie. That's that was, was the movie, about. yeah. But they need to make a film on Lou. Man. So it, they didn't they play the same uh, the no, same Yogi, team? Yogi Berra so was much older. I'm going to turn you on. Where I, where I went down this rabbit hole, um, there's an awesome book. Um, it's uh, Discipline is Destiny. Discipline is Destiny. Yeah, you got to. You definitely got to add this to your queue. Um, Discipline is destiny. And it's Ryan Holiday is the author. Fucking awesome book, man. And uh, he kind of opens with Lou Gehrig. Dude, there was one time that he got beaned so many times that guys, pitchers were trying to take him out to like to break his winning streak, right? So he had like a target on his head. Ryan Holiday. He got Holiday. hit in the head. This was before they wore baseball helmets. He got hit in the head so bad that his head swelled up, and he had to use Babe Ruth's hat because Babe Ruth was like this 240-pound dude to continue Damn. to play the game. And it was crazy because he couldn't fit in his hat. That's the power of self-control. Yeah. It's a badass book. I just started it, and I'm fucking hooked, man. You like I reading or listen. listening? I listen. Yeah, I like listening. I I have too much like ADD to like just sit. I, I don't have ADD. Asleep, I've never been diagnosed with it, but like I always feel like I have to be multitasking. Like, and so I'll throw it on. Like today, I threw this on uh, and just went on a walk. I did three miles with the dog today, which was cool. And so I'll throw it on occasionally then. But when I really start taking them in is when I'm laying in bed at night because I I'll lay there and just think. But if I turn on an audio book and just set like a thirty minute timer. Once that timer goes off, then I take my headphones out and I fucking go to bed. That's kind yeah. of the deal. And I, I listen on my on runs. Yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, that's that's my go to if if I have a preference to it. Just kind of helps push through a lot of shit. Yeah. There's something, man, I'm addicted to like laying in bed with your eyes closed and just actually listening and like visualizing some shit a little bro, bit bro i have a hard time with that bro yeah me like sitting down in the dark it's almost like kind of gate guided though you know what i mean like oh you're that's talking crazy. to yeah. a fart in a frying pan though, bro. <laughs> like if you haven't if you haven't noticed yeah the, his energy is like level a thousand like oh bro. The, so so much i know i need to have you back just for an episode bro. with you because we could go on for hours about oh, your bro, whole backstory like and everything. Three hours, four yeah. hours, but bro, I was so I excited you were the coming up today, podcast dude. Podcast in peanut gallery history. Yeah, bro, I can't. I can't sit there, <laughs> bro. We sat like there I and Rogan at one time oh, for like three bro. hours and forty five minutes. Yeah, I think yeah, it was yeah, it was a long time, bro. Damn, <laughs> bro, I can't. I can't sit. I'm gonna have to go and listen myself. to that. Yeah, yeah. Bro, I can't sit and talk about everything. I can't sit. Oh man, I lose my shit, bro. I don't know why. You gotta have people around you. No, it's not like that. It's like I. 
I feel like I burn my energy throughout the day. Then I'm like, okay. So how do you fall asleep then? Like, bro. Lights on, TV on, like fucking TV on. Heavy metal music? No, no, no. TV on and like light. I don't do light. Like just TV on and pass out. Uh I feel like I've always been that way. But it's like, bro, it's like I need my energy to focus somewhere. Because if I don't, that's why I I do it though. I start like go deep fucking thoughts and shit. That's why I do the audiobooks because I'll lay there and I'll start thinking about the next day. And then next thing you know, I'm laying there for an hour. But if I throw in the audiobook and just focus on that, right, and listening to a story or trying to make myself better or learn something. True. Yeah, it makes me tired. It's yeah. hard work. Yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah, it's good on that. <laughs> That's why I think, though, where the people from the outside may not see or or now it's it's more and more now that he's had more media appearances mm-hmm. but like that what you got in the little bit like especially right in the cage right afterwards like that ha 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 las vegas i'm back like no, that is ready. yusuf I was a thousand ready. percent of the time so <laughs> oh, like, you were so excited bro I was, yes. his energy there or the i pre-fight, love seeing like, that it's I infectious i couldn't, I couldn't wait exactly I like this wait. kid is a fucking star and it's i was just dreaming about to that too it. i was dreaming about two i was dreaming about it for like two weeks bro i swear to god i was bro, like, he told me a week in advance that he was going to talk shit to paul felder if he interviewed him after the fight Oh, bro, I was, I was, I was like waiting, and I was like, <laughs> so like I always thought about like, okay, like, so my, uh, this is funny, this is crazy, but uh, as coach, I, after every fight, like before every fight, I should say, especially when I got kicked out of the UFC, I have like one word that I pick for that for the whole thing. So the tournament that I fought three fights in one night was just outclassing everybody. Just that's my word. It was outclassing everybody. And I think I did, I've done that because I was so pissed. I was fighting a boxer, and they thought he's gonna walk over me. I felt disrespected, and I was like, "Like, oh, you want to beat me in your own fucking sport? No problem. I'll come to your sport and fuck you up." That's like the difference, you know. So that was like, okay, there's levels to this, right? And that was my whole thing. But a lot of people didn't know this fight. And you can ask Mark. You can ask everybody. All my coaches. I told them. I'm gonna make this look easy. And my word was to make this easy. That's it. That's like my whole word the whole week. I went in and I was like, and then I sit. So You certainly did that. <laughs> but the only thing that hits me, like the fight doesn't hit me until Wednesday. Or this one hit me on Wednesday because I, I, I watched the interview and stuff like that. But usually when I start cutting weight, which mm-hmm. is Thursday night, that's when I feel it. Like I start getting the nerves. I start getting all in like thinking and this and this and that. So what I learned was like, I just think about what I'm going to do. So like I, I was writing it like in my head, I was going through it. I was like, I was going to say that Rampage Jackson when he said, I'm black. I mean, I'm back. <laughs> I almost said that. But I was like, no, 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 let me, let me just chill out. Let me just chill out. And then I kept like running thoughts like that. And like, kind of like, I was just having fun with my mind, if that mm-hmm. makes any sense. So I was kind of like, doing that doing this doing that and then the billy comment stuck with me the whole week the whole from wednesday to to saturday yeah Yeah. it was the the paul is different paul was in the fight island so paul was talking all this smacking about me he'll go at it with you me and him have gotten into it over some bullshit just like i did with his ass too so and I, I made sure, and I was like, "What do you think?" He was like, "Oh, very impressive." I was like, "Yeah, that's what I don't think I fucking forgot either." Yeah. You know? but, uh, <laughs> I did see that in the yeah. post fight interview. Yeah, 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 yeah that was, was good. Like, man. I'm not forgetting, but yeah. that was kind of like that. I was like, but the comment Billy said, I was like, that's all I had in my head. I was like, I, I can't wait to s- tell tell this when it's done, like telling the podcast. So I was like, I don't know, bro. I'm like, I'm like, I'm a petty that way. I don't know. I feel like you I, definitely I, are. I, it's it's infectious, man. Like I was grinning ear to ear. Sitting by myself watching the fights, wherever I, I think my fam. Oh no, my son came up and actually watched it with me. Oh, bro! And I was just grinning ear to ear, man, because you were. It's so much fun to watch somebody actually enjoy what they're doing. And oh, bro, I was having like a you blast. were loving it, oh, dude. You were all over the I was, place. I was, bro, I was talking to the fighters. They were trying to corral you to get oh. you to go fucking backstage, dude. And you were all they're over gonna the stop, place. Bro. I, was like, I was like fucking all hyped out. They're like, they looked at me. They're like, they don't even want to stop me. They're like, ah, yeah. oh, fuck it, whatever. We're going on Yusuf's time. So yeah. when I fought the 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 Peyton dude won right after. So they're like trying to kick me out. Like, let's go, let's go, yeah. let's go. And I was not even the, the cameras were supposed to be there for the main event and co-main event they started recording me and they started questioning me and i was like uh okay like awesome uh, i didn't even know that was happening but yeah. that was that type of deal but yeah i was i was i was having 
I feel like I forget about the the winning experiences and then the winning in life and all that stuff. Some sometimes you take it for granted, you know. And mm-hmm. I was like, I was like, fuck it, man. We might die tomorrow, so I, at least if I die, I'll die super fucking happy about what I did and what I'm doing. So keep was, doing it, man. It's fu- it's fucking yeah. fun to watch, and I think you probably don't realize it, but you probably made thousands. Hundreds of thousands of people maybe even smile, dude. Like, oh, bro, that was that was my like, whole thing too, man. I was like bringing smiles because I feel like, especially now these days, bro. I feel like we focus so much on failure and, mm-hmm. bro. There's so much shit talking about you. You suck. There's you so much failure. Oh, right? like there's bro. so many things to be compared to now. Fuck, bro. And, uh, and the comments are brutal, bro. Self comparison, you know. Yeah, even too. Yeah, bro. The comments like. You, you gotta that's stay a, that's out a of that true, shit. Yeah, the, yeah. Well, I love it now. Don't bring, read the YouTube comments no, here. No, bring dude. that shit, bro. <laughs> bring that shit to me, bro. All right, bro. you'll get something from oh, this, I'm sure. Bro, yeah. bro. Guess what? Like, what's his name? If you don't like it, well, fuck you. I don't, yeah. I don't know what to tell you, bro. Like, that's right. what I keep telling people. I'm gonna yeah. live. What's his name? Bernie Mac. He said, they don't like him. Fuck him. That's it. Yeah. I was like, but bro, I I I was so focused on like even when I before I left the gym, I remember one of my teammate Alex uh, told me he was like. I was reading the comments and he said, Ilya Taporia's son is back or shit like that. Oh, dude. That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. So they, they were saying, he's like, don't read that shit. I was like, no, 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 no. I love this shit. Bring that shit to me yeah. because I can't wait to fucking rub it in their face. Because when you go in there and be like, there's nothing worse. Well, that's like David Goggins' main fuel, I think, or something, right? Is nah, all, let's fucking and go, bro. Let me tell you, he, he gets a lot time. of hate. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I feel like I feel like I don't get that much hate to be yeah. honest. But like, I I have great uh, fan support and all that stuff. But if you but can use it as fuel, yeah, that crazy that's what you're using. Will for. literally sit there with a voice recorder and he will read like with someone like will make those comments and then he'll read the comments oh, into no, his no. voice recorder and then instead of you sitting there with the audio book at night. He sits there and he listens to this, these mixtapes of people's crazy. comments at That's night. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah, he talked about that in uh, in Never Finished, in, okay. in this more recent book, that that's what he did. Bro, yeah. I, stopped, I stopped reading yeah, after that's, that's that's the, book, bro. the later one. Like, yeah. I read like two hours in. Was like, that's the best, probably the best book I've ever read. I have re-listened to that multiple times, especially the way that they do it with him kind of having like the mini casts after each episode. Mm-hmm. Phenomenal. But obviously... It's a very polarizing style, so he got a lot of hate for it. So he said all of that shit that people talked after the first book, he would just read into his uh, into his voice recorder, and he had mixtapes of all these things. So he said like his girl would look at him like he's just a straight up psychopath, which he is. He is. I'm about to say, but, dog. but yeah, like, in, in that way though, he said like yeah. that's what kind of you know he used that he's to, to crazy fuel. It's so well, funny. crazy as fuck. He's so well liked, but not that many people like him that have been like a, like nobody likes to i guess be around him dude like that's the kind of yeah but i think that he runs it's an the intimidation show that thing. yeah, it's, yeah it's an intimidating thing that if you aren't secure in who you are then it, he's the type of person who he's gonna make you start to fear all or all it's of those like only cameron and haynes can that hang, you have dude you know who cameron haynes is no same yeah, sort you, of you type know who of haynes is it, the, the bow hunter guy who's always with joe rogan and shit you've seen oh him yeah, yeah 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 yeah, so I mean, but that that's again though, that's another person who's a very high achiever who is secure in what they do and who is on top of their shit. Didn't the they people go on like who, crazy runs when they saw each all other? All the time. Yeah. Runs, lifts, yeah. all of that. Yeah. But the fucking when you have someone challenge. who the people who hate your goggins and those types of the world are the ones who they're they're not as confident in what they're capable of or they're not willing to go push themselves or they're the people who are like, oh, no, nah, man, like you're, you're crazy for going out and doing that sort of shit. Whereas someone who is a little bit more of a roughneck themselves, they're going to speak the same language as someone like a Goggins, right? Yeah. Like if you're the docile person who- That's what I'm saying. You have to be term, on that Goggins level to right. even fucking compute. Right? You know, if, like, you're, oh. if you're that guy who is, you know, you're you're kind of, you know, you're working the, the nine to five life, kind of a the, the, the comfort life, if you will. They're, those are the ones who you see a little bit more. They like, oh yeah, go push yourself to the brink, like the the anti grind sort of mindset. Well, it's out so there. funny how many fake motherfuckers are out there doing that now. It's like, <laughs> bro, they want to be involved so bad. Yeah, like, yeah. what pisses me off is it's like, it's not even pisses me off. It just makes me feel like so bad for this for for some of these people. I'm like, it really takes all your energy to to comment and and do this because you're so salty to somebody having a success and doing better than you in life instead of just like that's what i kind of learned after as well i'm like i seen my teammates get new contracts get this get this get that instead of me being salty and i'm like 
no, I know I will get there because I know what's what I have in my head that to get to that instead of being fucking just salty and be like, well, fuck this dude. I'm not going to help him. I'm not going to do this. Like, why is that? That's not who I am. You know, I feel like some people, so many people trying to change who they are just to be blend in with the fucking world. Like, yeah, fuck, fuck them, bro. Like, who cares? Like, just be yeah, you. Be yourself. If man. they don't like do it, they you don't do. like yeah. You don't like it. You don't like it. I don't know what to fucking tell you. Like, don't be my friend. It's simple as that. Don't follow me. Don't. Don't do none of that. Well, it's just so much better. You have real interactions with humans. It's not fucking fake or lying, right? Like, well, that's what I love when I yeah. see comments on my Instagram. They says stuff like that. And then I, I click on the profile and it says he follows you. And I was like, why the fuck are you following me? Like, if you're going to have the energy to post that comment. And all I do now is like, I see the comment, delete, delete delete and yeah. i was like i was like what well, if we could do this all day bro and i was like what you're gonna tell me in my face i don't think so exactly and i was right. like what, what are you gonna say something I'm like whatever man it's like well that's it's a waste what, of energy that's what he i said too it's like trolls. it's Sometimes not like i embrace the fire <laughs> i was like it's stupid. it's not like we're coming over the airwaves here like somebody actually had to go to a platform click a button and download it or listen to it or wh however right no so he dreams you about can me. turn this shit off that's right what here. i love so much they dream <laughs> about you yeah. they think about your that failure should be your next word i dream, love dude. that bro i fucking love that i'm like i get to say that hey all you think about is me. All you yeah. think about me seeing fucking lose. All this. You fucking hate it. You win a fight and then they're going to say the same thing. And I was like, you know what? I fucking love it. Keep it going. Because that's all energy and you're just wasting fucking time in your life that makes no sense. And I don't know why, but I'm going home back happy, living my life, lose or win or draw. I do not care. But all I care about is me living my life and enjoying my journey. That's all that matters. And like I said, if I have my core people that I'm always been and I always listen so to and important. understand. Yeah. But I always have friends as well. Those are friends. They're you're not my actual core, the exactly the people that I go to and all that stuff, right? As long as you mature enough and you you be become a man at that part, life becomes easy, man. Like like it's not easy. It comes simple. Life is never easy. Life is never fucking easy. No matter how much money you have and all that stuff, it's never easy, you know? But yeah. I tell I tell people like they're like, Oh, this guy has this, this guy has that. I'm like, Yeah, but you don't see the fucking work that he puts in. Like, you know how much stress that shit is, bro. I'm like like fighting just in general is just stressful fucking you can, thing. Listen, bro. you can have all the money in the world, man. The one thing that everybody really wants though is love. For sure. Right? Like that's the only thing. And live. That's like only, yeah, live. live. Be you. Yeah. Like, why do I gotta change me for, for somebody else? Because you don't like the fucking way I talk. Well, Sorry, I didn't fucking grow up the same way you did. Like, you, yeah. all right, you don't like the way I act. I'm like, I love I don't it. Gotta Keep act doing it. Way, I don't gotta act the way you gotta <laughs> act. You know? No, I just hate it. Yeah. It's like I understand. Like, there's respectful and there's out of line, right? Like, there is. Yeah, yeah you know, yeah. you can't get be fucking good, out of line, be a right? Good fucking yeah, but human, like, yeah. yeah, but like, don't come at me because you don't like the jokes. I'm like, oh, me saying, <laughs> oh, this white dude said this. This white dude. I'm like, that's who I am. I was like, I'm just gonna be me. You know? I'm not gonna like change it, but. We're like, you want to fight about it? I'm like, I don't think so. Like, well, what do you want to do about it? You know? I'm like, have fun. Forget about it. Like, move on with your life, you know? But Yeah, don't don't sweat the small things, man. Someone you can't. might catch you in a King Supers parking lot. Yeah. <laughs> bro, he's trying to pull up on me in a King Super lot. I was Today? Gonna, no, it was okay. a while back, bro. I mean, you tell him the story. I, I thought I was going to yeah, fight, Yeah, I got to hear this. I yeah. thought I was going to fight. I was walking yeah. with my groceries and everything, bro. Oh, shit. Oh, bro. It, it was it was so perfect. Like, I mean, he he literally almost, like, turned. it was a good thing I was in the car and had mm -hmm. some distance because, like, he, he was, like, full on, like, Barack and Rage ready to yeah. roll right then. <laughs> bro, I turned around. I looked at but him like, this motherfucker. He, he's walking down in the middle of the row at King Super's over by the gym, and I'm in the car going and he didn't see me that that i'm pulling down and going down and try to find a parking spot but he was kind of in the middle so i just hammer on the horn and i just yell out the window get the fuck out of the middle or like get the fuck out of the <laughs> road or something like that and then he turns around and just oh bro if if i could have captured a a still of what his face looked like in that oh, moment. I was ready like, to fight. It, if looks could yeah. kill, he was ready sitting there with a full on like Tony Montana bazooka ready to blow me off right there. Ready to just to just eviscerate me at that point. <laughs> Bro, what's up with Colorado with that? See, idea? that's well, I gotta be careful with some of my friends because a lot of them conceal carry and shit, yeah. dude. I'm like, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. bro. I'm like I'm like, there's no pranks of going to their house and none of that shit, yeah. bro. I'm good, bro. I, like, oh, bro, the same thing, though, almost happened to me a couple of weeks. Like, Brandon Royval ran up on me in King Supers from behind me, and he grabbed my... He, I didn't see him there, and he grabbed my, my hood from behind me and threw it over my head. 
And oh, then, then he shit. backed off for a yeah. second. And it was just, he was just like, yeah, bro, like, I, I know that you can at least halfway do a little bit of something. So I knew I had to give myself some space. <laughs> oh, hell no. Yeah, if I do it to anybody in general, I'm like, I'll yeah. grab, stay away, bro. It was like, like yeah. I knew that it had to be somebody who knew me just to come up like right, right. there and do it right then and, and, but but i mean there's also the chance that it's not well you never know yeah. right yeah you, you see know. all the prank videos you never and know shit. but then i start hearing him fucking giggling like because i'm trying to get my jacket off the top of my head and i right. turn around and it's brandon just sitting there like just with the <laughs> shit eating grin Hell and yeah, laughing that's a, that's a win right there yeah. it's like i i thought it was uh like i thought it was my roommate who he also fights but uh adrian but I, so i if it was adrian i was gonna double leg him right there in the middle of the king supers <laughs> but brandon brandon was smart and he got away right away he was like oh shit like yeah, yeah so it, here's my marketing totally point easy, dude. Like, they should have the, two ufc fighters like pulling pranks on each didn't uh, like, bro like you can't be caught slipping like what he, was he the justin gaethje tequila fucking was that was that a prank thing it was uh gaethje and somebody going at it it was a pretty good commercial. Oh, Kevin Holland. Oh, Kevin, Kevin Holland. Holland. Kevin, Kevin Holland and Wonder Boy. Yeah. 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 You want to know the funny thing about that Kevin Holland and Wonder Boy commercial? They did more grappling in that 30 second commercial than they did in their whole fight. Oh, the other oh, one is yeah. Justin Gaethje versus Michael Chiesa. That's what oh, it was. Yeah, that yeah, was yeah, a tequila yeah, yeah, one. They yeah. were talking walking, back and forth. Talking, yeah, 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 talking shit. That yeah. was the one. That was the one. Yeah, that was yeah, pretty good. Yeah. But yeah, you, you, the, case in point in each of those examples, though, bro, like in the real world, Someone come up on you and pull your card that quick. Yeah. You never know nowadays what nowadays what people are trained in either, man, or what they're carrying. No, or well, it bro, blows my mean, mind how some people want to just like, even on bar fights and stuff, I'm like, bro, you literally, the dude can literally ruin your whole life by like just dropping down to your leg lock or something and just, you're out for nine months, ten, uh, two years, just, you don't know what yeah. to do. And if you have insurance, by it's the way. It's not worth it. And it I'm just saying, if you it, have insurance, yeah. and I'm like, Bro, I'm like, the confidence that some people have, it's like, man, like, what the fuck? And yeah. that's considering someone that you're dealing with, someone who is a martial artist or someone who trains there. It's more or less like what I worry about more is someone actually having having a gun, having a knife, oh, something yeah, like that. Oh, yeah, bro. Yeah. You know, like, there's, there's so many new people to the Denver area in the last uh, few months that sometimes... You question, like I was with Dustin Jacoby a while back. We were leaving from uh, we were leaving from a watch party, and there was just there were so many street walkers from in between where we were at for the UFC watch party to where we were parked. And we both just kind of like had the conversation with each other when we were walking through, and it's literally like streets lined with people out there in tents and just kind of like laid out across the street. We're like, it's time, it's time, right? Like you're ready. Yeah. It's like, like, well, shit, I'm glad that I have you with me. You're one of the best fighters in the whole goddamn world. Yeah, no so I, I, I'm <laughs> I just, love that guy. I'm, I'm the just wrong a, motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. Well, shit. But, bro, none of that shit fucking matters when there's no. 30 people on Hell the block no. on the street. Hey, listen and to this, me and man. Dustin are wearing nice clothes, wearing jewelry, all this shit coming from hosting a watch party. And, like, these guys might be thinking, like, okay, like, they got a little bit of ice on them. Like, that might be a come up. Yeah. So we're like, all right, bro, like, we better be on our fucking game here if something happens. I think one thing that's helped me in life is just the size of me i think people are intimidated by which you can't judge a book by its cover right like maybe i might not be able to fight my way out of a wet paper bag but yeah but why, I think what, it, why it do helps. i want to test test that you it know helps, i'm, I'm yeah. good it does help um, my skinny ass i'm like bro I'm, yeah you but beat still my ass. it's also gotten me in trouble too at bars because the guys are like Some okay let's go pick a the fight the, the big the biggest guy, guy right, yeah. right or whatever um but no i was just in san francisco like two weeks ago and we were there doing a podcast and dude, that is uh, the past three times that I've been there. Each time I've seen a dead person. Every what time. the fuck? Two of them were crime scenes. Oh, hell no. They're like police tape and everything. Oh, hell no. So I had a day where I was like, we were staying down in Union Square. And I was like, I just want to get the fuck out of here because I mean, that ah. is like tent city. I mean, you, we were a couple blocks from the Tenderloin. I don't know how much you know about it, but just stay away from fucking there. Yeah, I don't like know it is. That. The opioid ep epidemic there is for fucking real, dude. Wow. It is. It's horrible. No, thank you. So anyways, I went to Golden Gate Park, which is like, it's near like Haight-Ashbury. Kind of a cool, like hippie, young part of town. Yeah. A lot of jazz music and just like, it's a cool area, man. Um, but right across from that is Golden Gate Park. So there's a park that come, that leaves Haight-Ashbury and goes all the way to uh, the Golden Gate Bridge State Park. Which is really dope. That's it's a beautiful, bridge, right? Yeah, and they have an amphitheater in there. They have this like football field. There's a ton of like soccer fields and like families. They have, I think they have a skate park in there. 
the Japanese garden, all this crazy architecture, like waterfalls. So it's busy. It's, it's like fucking super cool, busy. dude. Yeah. It's way cooler than like Central Park. But same sort of vibe in a downtown area, you know, like uh, and it's much larger than Central Park. But anyways, I was walking through that just to get some exercise, get outside. And sure as shit, I come right across the crime scene right in the middle of that. And people are just taking their kids to like soccer practice. Like it's no big deal, dude. Like it's a daily occurrence, man. Hell no. It was no, crazy. No, no yeah. way. You guys want to listen to a funny story about that? It's like when I bought my first house, uh, what well, the only house I have, but I, uh, the realtor, that's when the market was like hot. Like I'm talking like a few beat. years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Like you're talking about, we're pouring a hundred thousand over and we're still getting beat. Like that's it how was crazy. crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So we went in and this dude was taking me to the hood, bro. Like I'm talking, taking me to the federal, some investment property that's 500,000. One bedroom, one bathroom, and I was like, "Shit, yeah!" Like taking me to some fucking shit holes, and I looked at him. I was like, "Hey, bro, I'm spending half a million dollars. You better fucking put me like." I always tell this story. It's hilarious. I was like, "I better see the fu- grass all cut the same. I want to see golden retrievers fucking r- walking by. <laughs> I want to see kids going by themselves. I want to see a Tesla pulling out of the driveway. Yeah. That's exactly where I want you to fucking put me at, bro. Don't yeah. fucking put me in no fucking 30 car parking lot or, or something yeah. like that. I was like, I'm, I'm sorry. I was like, I'm paying this money for that reason. I was like, it's not just to get out of there. But, bro, he, that's why I, I live in Highlands Ranch now. But He's like, put me yeah. in a place bro. where they'll profile me. Oh, yeah. oh I'm profiled as fuck for sure. Yeah. They thought I was a drug dealer, bro. They really thought I was a drug dealer when the first time I came that's there. Just like, swagger, that's why dude. I said bro, they, swagger, thought, they thought I was a yeah. drug dealer. They're like, well, because I drive a fucking just a straight red Tesla, bro. It's like mm-hmm. all wrapped up. I, I like, I love red, bro. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't, I don't know why, but I was like, bro, they thought I was for sure a drug it's dealer. It's your country's bro. flag, Yeah, man. exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, I, love, I just love red, you know, and then they're like, bro, they're like, this motherfucker's a drug dealer, bro. And then they started seeing me and then like I got my neighbor, like I told him, I was like, yeah, I fu-, like when I was in the UFC, I was like. Yeah, fighting the UFC, blah, blah. He started looking at me like, oh, okay. And then he lived next to me for two years now. And then he found out I was fighting. And then he watched me, bro. He couldn't stop. He's just like, we want to congratulate you. Awesome. Blah, blah. I was like, see, I told you I'm not Big a drug dealer, bro. Now, yeah. yeah, I told you I'm not a drug dealer. But It's funny but, because I come from like a roadie background, right? So I pretty much wear black everywhere. And, you know, I kind of don't fit into like an affluent neighborhood sometimes. But I picked this up from a buddy of mine. Shout out, Freddie Haluka. Uh, salt of the earth. This dude looks like, grew up in L.A., like, bad, bad, bad childhood. And he looks like a hell's angel, man. Like, he's not, but just that sort of demeanor from the business. And I stole this from him. He's like, yeah, the best way to get your neighbors to not want to talk to you is when they do talk to you, tell them that you're in the witness protection program. <laughs> Oh, I didn't know no. you wanted that. <laughs> no, I didn't want it. I just made the mistake because I had heard it. <clears throat> Damn. So well, that's it didn't a good work. one. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I just, <laughs> you see my ass in there. They'll be like, all right. Yeah. Do we trust this guy? Do we talk to this guy? I don't know. Just we'll tell him you're in the witness protection program. <laughs> well, but I feel like that's where it's kind of the difference overall with fighters as professional athletes as opposed to, say, like NBA or even for that matter, major league and especially NFL players, right? Because it's just, it's stature. Yeah. Like, you know, you, you've had D Wolf or you've had some other NFL guys here that when, when that motherfucker walks in the room, you know that there is a big body there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's six, five, 300 some pounds. Yeah, I'm good. Keep me the pure, fuck away from that guy. Stack bro. Muscle, yeah. you know yeah, he's so mean? fucking big. That's bro. another level of human. Oh, man. bro. Yeah. I said, bro, I told these guys, I'm like, I held mitts. I helped Mark with the Broncos player and he was one of them. Bro, I never woke up sore in my life from holding pads. <laughs> I was like, I'm never doing that shit again. He was like, I was getting paid good money, but I was like, I was like, it's not worth it, bro. I'm good, bro. I'm fine. You like, were holding mitts for Derek? Bro, Derek, oh, Von Shane. Miller, oh, all yeah, these guys, yeah. bro. Like Shane Ray. My shoulders, Bradley bro. Chubb. My And Thomas, uh, rest uh-huh. in peace, right? But yeah. Bro, I'm talking like my shoulders and my forearms were so fucking dead, bro. I woke up the next day. I was like, what workout did I go through? I remember, and I was like, Oh, it's the fucking two hundred fucking seventy five pound guys that come right. in at <laughs> you like mitts. twenty miles an hour or some shit. I was like, yeah, I'm good, bro. But yeah, bro, those guys know, can I'm move. Sorry, bro, yeah. I had to bring that up, but you finished yeah. that. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm just saying, like, as far as stature alone, like, and and just in that instance, you know, like you're you're holding for these guys, <sighs> and they're not 
technically sound or crisp, but the amount of torque, velocity, and power behind what they have, you don't need to have it completely crisp. Or or someone like well, Manalik Watson, who big their that hands dude, are. Like, think about how bro, much force is behind fu- that. He kicked our shin conditioning bag and folded the motherfucker in half. <laughs> <laughs> bro, it's ridiculous, bro. Like we we like, have what a, the red, fuck do you a eat, red bag, <laughs> red banana bag in the gym that it's filled like it's a stiff bag that's meant to condition you. Right. And this fucking guy kicks it and he sends it all the way over to the wall and it's bent in half. Like that's crazy. That's not yeah. like that doesn't happen with kickers who are kickers by trade, like kicking fighters in that sense. Like can he yeah. just no technique, just completely whipped from the ground. Nah. And just folded that thing over. Like, it's just a different level of horsepower when you're talking that stature of human. Yeah. So, but circling that back, though, when you're talking about fighters, I think that's why it maybe has much more of a the common person's appeal, though, too. Because you look to see someone like you, and, like, you're you're walking and you're, you're right down, like, oh, like, we're, we're, like, the same size. Or, you know, like, we're within a relative range of size. Whereas you then, you look and you see, like, oh, man, like, well, yeah. If I was six five, three hundred and forty pounds, like I could do that too. People get just kind of that that sort no, of complex. But no, you can't. Right. right? You, yeah. you understand it <laughs> yeah. just from being around yeah. but that's where you get a lot of people who start to have that thought, well, if I won the genetic lottery like they did, then blah blah blah. But then you have someone who just a, an example like Nate the train landwer who's fighting on this car this weekend who if you were to just see him out of context and you didn't know that he was a UFC fighter and you just heard him kind of talk or the way that he banters, bro, you think that he is a guy who's coming right off of the factory line. He, you know, right. he's, he's, a blue, he's a blue collar dude who is showing up at the, you know, at the local watering hole who just got done putting in a 60 hour week of shift work. Who's been up there on the beams, you know, welding out some shit. There's something about that real worker, like farm strength, right? Like there, Oh, yeah. there absolutely is. But I think that, someone like him though he has a massive following because a lot of guys they see themselves in that person 100 or you've yeah. had vince on here before who yeah. vince for a long time you know vince worked Shout in the trades and, and was you know was was in the in the trades and worked blue collar Bro, he's for strong as fuck but that's why i think way. that and, oh and my god another guy who you don't realize has as big of a following as he does but he has such a faithful following online of, he's of a all great, of his he's people. a good person too man i can't Incredibly i gotta get him person, back in bro. here he's on the short like, list for when sure, we so. were in jacksonville for his last fight like people left and right like they you you see guys who are recognized or pulled a lot you know like the hamzats the volks the, all of those guys the real top mm-hmm. a side names of the card but bro everywhere that we went people knew who vince was and were stopping vince for pictures for you know just hey can can i you know can i grab a selfie with you can you sign this for me dude we were on the fucking beach <laughs> and vince is coming in from being out in the water and someone was like waiting like they recognized him from like way down halfway down yeah, on the he's beach and like, it for a minute like oh no like like that that's vince that mustache is undeniable Bro, but yeah, so you like, know what i'm yeah. saying like that's where you know someone like him though who has just that that grit to him that i think a lot of people can relate to that just sort of everyday person well, Yusuf, who, you know, i you think show that up you could day. easily be that too man you you have superstar potential oh, yeah. 100 <laughs> percent, dude you kind of already are and that's yeah, why see, right there see, exactly you just gotta yeah. make sure uh, that the camera's on whenever yeah. you have Yusuf. oh no no, no. Yeah. Chill, 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 chill. Yo, i mean yeah I'm, I'm just being me man i was like whatever i was like i don't you need your own youtube show or some oh, shit bro. like somebody following you around with a camera would be fucking great you started fun. twitch yeah, let's go. Yeah, I started doing some Twitch a little bit. But Hell yeah! I'm like, I got, I got to get in more to that. But and it, is this hoodie? Is that yours? Yeah, yeah. This, yeah? This is, is this the, your merch? Yeah, this is my merch. That's badass. Yeah, yeah. This is my logo. Fuck yeah, that's cool oh, as fuck, man. Big ass that's, teeth over there. Bro. That's cool. God damn. <laughs> Hell yeah. But yeah, that's 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 that Fit man. That yeah, big ass but, head. Yeah. <laughs> Let's not talk about big ass heads now. Okay. Let's Gentlemen, this down. has been fucking awesome. We've been at it two hours. We got to wrap it up. Um, damn two hours Holy yeah shit. It, it flies by but i i need to have you both back in here this was awesome it was a record breaker for us having two guys sit across from me especially let's go guys in stature. <laughs> super cool uh a few minutes before we take off though let's drop social media you have we didn't even get into mma plug or anything that you have going on with denver sports radio you got anything coming up? Like, what's what's yeah, happening? Yeah, man, I'll always have uh, always have some different irons in the fire, if you will. But 
every Tuesdays, every Tuesday from 12 to 1 p.m. on Mile High Sports, we have the MMA plug. That's uh, that's a weekly combat sports show. You know, we obviously MMA Super is the large basis, too, man. but we'll yeah. cover other combat sports, whether it's the the grappling world. If there's a, a big like fight pass invitational or something coming up, or I'm also an analyst for Colorado Jiu Jitsu Club, which is a local based promotion, which is Jiu Jitsu in a cage. Good fight. So too. if you've ever seen. Like the one championship grappling matchups, like with Mikey Musumishi, Daniel Kelly, the Rui Tolo brothers. Which any is of those, coming here in September, right? They're coming they, back again, yeah. yeah. But th- yeah. those grappling matches in a cage, I'm a part of a promotion who does just that as an analyst there. I'm also a part of Colorado Combat Club as well as 5280 Muay Thai Fight Series. 5280 Muay Thai Fight Series, the only all-exclusive Muay Thai fight promotion in Colorado. Our next show is going to be on April 6th. That is at the Stampede. It's going to be a Muay Thai matinee. Crack the doors at 12. Going to have you out of there in time for you to go out there and enjoy the, the evening festivities. Colorado Combat Club, the next card is going to be on May 4th. So you're going to be out of there in perfect time to be able to... It's an afternoon show as well. Same venue, Stampede. Great spot to check out fights. Not a bad seat in the house. Afternoon is that card. in Denver? Or? Yes, it's okay. off of Havana Street, like yeah. Aurora, technically, oh, but it's oh, right yeah. off of uh, it's right where pretty much Hampton turns into Havana. So it's it's a uh, it's a cool little spot, not too far out, right from the city. You'll be out of there in time to be able to go watch the prelims for yeah. UFC I like that. I like how they have it earlier. I feel That's like sometimes smart. it takes too smart. long, yeah. bro. And then for uh, you know, and with that being the holiday weekend, whether you choose to go and watch the UFC pay per view card that night. You can, whether you are choosing Canelo, to take right? care of, exactly. Canelo, Canelo, yeah, Canelo yeah, that yeah. weekend. You uh, also that have weekend, uh, yeah. the, just whatever you do for Cinco de Mayo. I mean, we're we're in Colorado with a very rich Hispanic tradition, so I know that there's going to be a ton of get So that's, that's going to be the perfect opportunity. Come out, support the local scenes. There's going to be a lot of fighters from the front range showcased across that card. And yeah, there's no shortage of events from any promotion, though. I mean, I'm a I'm a fighter first guy in the first place. So yes, there are the promotions and the banners that I hang my hat with, but I'm an advocate for the entire fight community. There are shows that are going to be going on pretty much every weekend for the next few weeks. So try to buy those tickets directly from the fighters, help them out. That helps with their ticket percentage. That's my spiel on that. You could follow me on social media at comments from the peanut gallery. That's Great follow. Instagram and yes. uh, and on Threads. So let's go. Yep. That's Damn, me. dude, you got a lot going on, bro. Oh, dude. That's always. why it's been two years since you've been in here. Dude, so. every single day. Is we got like to get you back in here more 10 often. pounds of shit <laughs> in a five pound bag. Like there's so many things. Yeah. I mean, Outlaw Logic, that's a, that's a show that I produce online. For that's a, great. Coach I like Montoya. what you guys are doing. Yeah. Yeah. There. So again, there, there's so many things that there's just not enough time in the day all yeah. the time. I yeah, love the comedy aspect to it, man. Like just that side of. It's not even comedy. It's just guys talking shit a little bit, right? Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. It's good, good stuff, man. Have some good questions on there, you know? Yeah. The, uh, w- w- would you rather uh, have an erection for a year or what What was the other one? I, I can't remember what the other <laughs> or one hiccup. Was. Or hiccup. Yeah, or, or hiccups, yeah. Oh, I'm having an erection for the whole fucking year, bro. Yeah. <laughs> That's Weird. hard, man. That's a, nah. Those are both rough. No, nah, we stay hard, but I don't yeah. Hard, <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I mean, David Goggins, if you my did bad, have the bad, hiccups, could bad. you still have an erection? I don't know, bro. I don't Can think you, I want to yeah, have a fucking I mean, hiccup and an erection suck, at the dude, same yeah. time, bro. Like, Especially if you're at the bar <laughs> trying to lay some game or something. I don't know, like, bro. That yeah. might be an extra convulsion to your stroke. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It just sucks. <laughs> no, ain't yeah. no way. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, <laughs> ain't no way. Nah, bro. Nah, nah, nah. Keep me away from that. And then for you, Yusuf, where are you at on? You're on all the pages, but what's the Twitch channel? Oh, the Twitch channel is the Moroccan TV, Moroccan yeah. Devil TV. Hell yeah, Moroccan Devil and TV. And it's yeah, at yeah. the Moroccan Devil. I think I have it on my Instagram. I think don't Instagram. I? Yeah, yeah, right there. Okay, the Fuck Twitch, yeah. the Moroccan Devil TV. And then if people want one of your dope ass sweatshirts, where do I get one of those? Oh, I gotta put the the link back. It's millions dot com. Okay. It's, uh, yeah, I gotta put the link back up in there. I that's have, CEO. Yeah, that that's CEO. I think. Yeah, millions. Yeah, I gotta CEO. put some millions back cool. in there. Yeah, yeah. Well, dude, I'd love to have you back, Jordan. You're back. You're welcome here anytime, man. Just My hit man. me up, man. And uh, this has been fucking awesome. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thanks everybody for listening. Thanks for listening to the Mountainside Podcast. If you haven't had a chance to do this already, please take a moment, follow, like, subscribe, or rate on whatever platform you catch the Mountainside Podcast at. If you'd like some more information on upcoming episodes, safety tips, access to all of our affiliates, and all the badass discounts that we get here at the Mountainside Podcast, check out themountainsidepodcast.com.